the most part, for the writing component of this presentation, that will be the tool I focus on since it's free, it's popular, and people are usually more familiar with that than really anything else. So what are these opportunities? In the context of writing, we have contracts, court documents, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute, patent prosecution, where we really have to be careful, and legal marketing, which will be sort of a fun conclusion to this. You know, the contracts it, is an area where you, a lot of times you'll have a client ask you, yeah, add this to it, add a warranty of non-infringement, or, or add a further assurances clause, or something along those lines. And we all have our examples. We have things that we've used in the past, but AI can really help you sort of craft that in a way that you're not borrowing from old documents uh, and where a lot of the inputs are already there. And so the, the process of going from client request to having it in writing in the legal document itself can go a lot quicker than simply going back and finding your favorite further assurances clause and then adding it to a contract. Uh, there are a lot of advantages to the use of AI in, in the courtroom context. And of course, the, the judges who have issued these orders want to know if you're using AI in documents that come before their court. That's perfectly fair and happy to comply with that. Um, we'll talk about sort of the ins and outs of that and, and whether that is uh, an invitation to use AI or the judge telling you he doesn't want to see it and he doesn't want to know that you're using it. That's another area where uh, things are a bit murky and still in flux, uh, but with core documents, there are opportunities to use AI to improve our writing, to improve our efficiency. In terms of patent prosecution, there, I'm sure anyone who's a patent prosecutor listening right now, their ears have perked up and said, we can't disclose things to chat gpt and still comply with our duty of disclosure we, we or our duty of confidentiality rather uh, we can't disclose things to chat gpt and and not start a 102b bar and you're absolutely right there are ethical issues with with uh, privilege and all sorts of things to look out for in the context of patent prosecution okay so here's an example of contracts i mentioned a warranty of non-infringement Anybody who is a licensor attorney understands this. You have a piece of software that you're licensing. Um, you're, you're licensing it to a major company. Uh, you have the opportunity to use your paper, which sometimes isn't always the case. And the, the company you're licensing it to, the licensee, is asking you to warrant that the, the, the software that you're licensing does not infringe any patents. It's a perfectly valid and understandable request if you're licensing software and if it's if it's uh, if it's your vehicle, then you should warrant that it's not a lemon. That's perfectly fine. It's it's a very common thing to have. So I wrote into ChatGPT, I'm a lawyer writing a license agreement. I ask ChatGPT to write a warranty of non-infringement for the agreement. And then after that, I provide the details that ChatGPT will use in order to write that warranty of non-infringement. What do we have here? We have the opportunity is in writing contracts. I tell ChatGPT what my role is, that's important. I command ChatGPT to do something and I provide the details. This is the idea of avoiding the garbage in garbage out scenario where we want to effectively prompt these AI tools to give us a good output that we can then confirm uh, but we need to provide ChatGPT with the information it needs in order to provide that output. Here, and you'll hear me say role command details over and over again, that's really what you should focus on when trying to identify you know, what it is that you need to input into ChatGPT in order to make it effective. And here with, with contracts and license agreements specifically, you know, the, the advantage is that we're avoiding the duplication of work. We are avoiding the necessity of having to do the same thing over and over again, uh, avoiding having to, to reach back to that sample document and use it uh, in the context of a new contract where we may be moving from licensor to you know, client ABC Corp. Um, those types of things are, are you know, sort of painstaking and detail-oriented where a computer is frankly better suited to help us with that. 